Right, let's have a look at functional groups and classes. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is just distinguish between those two terms. So first of all, a functional group is simply uh, an atom or a group of atoms that have similar chemical properties in different compounds. We'll see lots of examples of those in a moment. And a class is simply the general name for a family of compounds that contain the same functional group. So if we can spot the functional group in a particular molecule, then we can identify which class uh, that molecule belongs to. Another thing you're going to see in some of the formulas we draw below is the letter R. And the R simply stands for the rest of molecule, or rest of the molecule. Um, just saves drawing the whole of a complicated molecule and allows us to fo focus on um, individual functional groups. So what we're going to try and do is have a look at some formulas of the different functional groups, name them, and also name the class to which they belong. Okay, let's, uh, let's start at the beginning then. Here we go. So bonded to the rest of my molecule is a CH3 group. This is known as an alkyl functional group. In this specific example, we would call it a methyl functional group because it contains just one carbon. Uh, however, there are lots of different possibilities for alkyl functional groups and depending on the name of uh, the number of carbons in each one, uh, they might have slightly different specific names. For example, if there was a C2H5 alkyl group, that would be known as ethyl because it contains two carbons. And if something contains only carbons and hydrogens and single bonds, it belongs to the class of alkane or the alkanes. So taking that uh, one step further, let's have a look at our next structural formula. Here we can see a carbon-carbon double bond and those R groups, you'll see the little dashes after them, just indicate that they could be different to each other. They could also be exactly the same. They could all be hydrogens or they might all be slightly more complicated sections of the molecule. So if I see a double bond in there, that is known as the alkenyl functional group and it would belong to the class of the alkenes. Next up, we've got a carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, if we see a carbon-carbon triple bond, this is the alkynyl functional group with a Y instead of an E, and that would belong to the class known as the alkynes. Next, here we go, we've got a kind of uh, effectively a benzene ring stuck onto the rest of my molecule. This is known as the phenyl functional group, and it belongs to the class known as the arenes. Next up, here we go, we've got an X. Now, X obviously is not the symbol of any elements in the periodic table. It's actually a general symbol for any halogens. So that's group 17 elements like uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Could be any of those, and they are known as the halogens. For that reason, this functional group is called the halogeno functional group, and that would belong to a class known as the halogeno alkanes, assuming that the rest of my molecule was just carbons, hydrogens, and single bonds. Next up, super common one, uh, we've got an O bonded to an H on the, uh, the rest of my molecule. Uh, this is known as the hydroxyl functional group, and if I see something with the hydroxyl functional hydroxyl functional group, it belongs to the alcohols. Next, so we've got oxygen. Again, this time my oxygen is between two um, rest of molecule bits, probably carbons and some other stuff there. So it's in the middle of a carbon chain. Uh, and this functional group is known as the alkoxy functional group. Sometimes it's called the ether functional group because it belongs to the uh, class of uh, the ethers. Uh, let's look at some more examples with oxygen. Here we go. Now I've got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen in the middle of a carbon chain. The functional group is called the carbonyl functional group. And in this case, because my carbon and oxygen, or the carbonyl group, is in the middle of a chain, this family uh, of compounds or class is called the, uh, the ketones. And we'll see another example of a functional group, um, which is a carbonyl functional group. However, this time you'll notice that my C double bond O is at the end of a carbon chain and therefore is only bonded to a hydrogen, not another 
carbon. So when my carbonyl functional group is at the end of a carbon chain, it's still the carbonyl functional group, but it now belongs to a class of compounds called the aldehydes. Next up, so it looks a little bit similar to the one above, except my kind of chain doesn't end with a hydrogen, it ends with an oxygen and a hydrogen. Uh, this is kind of similar to a carbonyl functional group, but with an extra oxygen in there. The functional group is known as the carboxyl functional group, and it belongs to the class of carboxylic acids. Next up again, a kind of similarity uh, to the carboxyl functional group, except this time my C double bond O and single bond O is in the middle of a carbon chain, so slightly different. For this reason, it needs a slightly different name. In this case, we call this the ester functional group. And easy to remember, the class is also called, um, known as the esters. Let's have a look at some molecules now with some nitrogen in them. Here we go. So at the end of my carbon chain, I've got an NH2 group. Those hydrogens could actually be replaced by uh, other uh, carbon containing sections of my molecule. Uh, and these are known as amino functional groups. So it could have two hydrogens, it could have one hydrogen and an R group, it could even have two R groups. And we can distinguish between these different options by uh, calling the first one a primary amino group or a primary amine, because amine is the class of compound. If my nitrogen is bonded to two carbons, it would be a secondary amine. And if it's bonded to three carbons in total, it would be a tertiary amine. Uh, let's have a look at one with what's well, got a kind of carbonyl group and a, an amino group in it. Uh, this is known as the amido functional group, sometimes called the carboxamide functional group. And this belongs to the class of compounds called the amides. So again, a bit of a similarity between the functional group name and the class. And finally, last one you might need to know of, we've got a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen at the end of my chain that is called a nitrile functional group and conveniently it, it belongs to the uh, class of compounds called nitriles. And those are all the ones you're going to need to know for IV chemistry. Hopefully this video was of some help.